Peter Piper's Practical Principles of Plain and Perfect Pronunciation. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. Peter Piper's Practical Principles of Plain and Perfect Pronunciation by an anonymous author. Preface Peter Piper, without pretension to precocity or profoundness, puts pen to paper to produce these puzzling pages, purposely to please the palates of pretty prattling playfellows, proudly presuming that with proper penetration it will probably, and perhaps positively, prove a peculiarly pleasant and profitable path to proper, plain, and precise pronunciation. He prays parents to purchase this playful performance, partly to pay him for his patience and pains, partly to provide for the printers and publishers, but principally to prevent the pernicious prevalence of perverse pronunciation. A. Andrew Airpump asked his aunt her ailment. Did Andrew Airpump ask his aunt her ailment? If Andrew Airpump asked his aunt her ailment, where was the ailment of Andrew Airpump's aunt? B. Billy Button bought a buttered biscuit. Did Billy Button buy a buttered biscuit? If Billy Button bought a buttered biscuit, where's the buttered biscuit Billy Button bought? C. Captain Crackskull cracked a catchpaw's coxcomb. Did Captain Crackskull crack a catchpaw's coxcomb? If Captain Catskull cracked a catchpaw's coxcomb, Where's the catchpole's coxcomb Captain Crackskull cracked? D. Davy Doldrum dreamed he drove a dragon. Did Davy Doldrum dream he drove a dragon? If Davy Doldrum dreamed he drove a dragon, where's the dragon Davy Doldrum dreamed he drove? E. Enoch Elkrig ate an empty eggshell. Did Enoch Elkrig eat an empty eggshell? If Enoch Elkrig ate an empty eggshell, where's the empty eggshell Enoch Elkrig ate? F. Francis Fribble figured on a Frenchman's filly. Did Francis Fribble figure on a Frenchman's filly? If Francis Fribble figured on a Frenchman's filly, Where's the Frenchman's filly Francis Fribble figured on? G. Gaffer Gilpin got a goose and gander. Did Gaffer Gilpin get a goose and gander? If Gaffer Gilpin got a goose and gander, where's the goose and gander Gaffer Gilpin got? H. Humphrey Hunchback had a hundred hedgehogs. Did Humphrey Hunchback have a hundred hedgehogs? If Humphrey Hunchback had a hundred hedgehogs, where's the hundred hedgehogs Humphrey Hunchback had? I. Inigo Impey itched for an Indian image. Did Inigo Impey itch for an Indian image? If Inigo Impey itched for an Indian image, where's the Indian image Inigo Impey itched for? J. Jumping Jackie jeered a jesting juggler. Did Jumping Jackie jeer a jesting juggler? If Jumpy Jackie jeered a jesting juggler, where's the jesting juggler Jumping Jackie jeered? K. Kimbo Kimble kicked his kinsman's kettle. Did Kimbo Kimble kick his kinsman's kettle? 
If Kimbo Kemble kicked his kinsman's kettle, where's the kinsman's kettle Kimbo Kemble kicked? L. Lanky Lawrence lost his lass and lobster. Did Lanky Lawrence lose his lass and lobster? If Lanky Lawrence lost his lass and lobster, where are the lass and lobster Lanky Lawrence lost? M. Matthew Menlegs missed a mangled monkey. Did Matthew Menlegs miss a mangled monkey? If Matthew Mendlegs missed a mangled monkey, where is the mangled monkey Matthew Mendlegs missed? N. Neddy Noodle nipped his neighbor's nutmegs. Did Neddy Noodle nip his neighbor's nutmegs? If Neddy Noodle nipped his neighbor's nutmegs, where are the neighbor's nutmegs Neddy Noodle nipped? O. Oliver Oglethorpe ogled an owl and oyster. Did Oliver Oglethorpe ogle an owl and oyster? If Oliver Oglethorpe ogled an owl and oyster, where are the owl and oyster Oliver Oglethorpe ogled? P. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Did Peter Piper pick a peck of pickled peppers? If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? Q. Quixote Quicksight quizzed a queerish quid box. Did Quixote Quicksight quiz a queerish quid box? If Quixote Quicksight quizzed a queerish quid box, where's the queerish quid box Quixote Quicksight quizzed? R. Rory Rumpus rode a raw-boned racehorse. Did Rory Rumpus ride a raw-boned racehorse? If Rory Rumpus rode a raw-boned racehorse, where's the raw-boned racehorse Rory Rumpus rode? S. Sammy Smelly smelt a smell of small coal. Did Sammy Smelly smell a smelt of small coal? If Sammy Smelly smelt a smell of small coal, where's the smell of small coal Sammy Smelly smelt? T. Tiptoe Tommy turned a Turk for twopence. Did Tiptoe Tommy turn a Turk for twopence? If Tiptoe Tommy turned a Turk for twopence, where's the Turk for twopence Tiptoe Tommy turned? U. Uncle's Usher urged an ugly urchin. Did Uncle's Usher urge an ugly urchin? If Uncle's Usher urged an ugly urchin, where's the ugly urchin Uncle's Usher urged? V. William Veden viped his vig and vase coat. Did William Veden vipe his vig and vase coat? If William Veden viped his vig and vase coat, where are the vig and vase coat William Veden viped? W. Walter Waddle won a walking wager. Did Walter Waddle win a walking wager? If Walter Waddle won a walking wager, where's the walking wager Walter Waddle won? X, Y, Z. X, Y, and Z have made my brains to cracko. X smokes, Y snuffs, and Z chews tobacco. Yet oft by X, Y, Z, much learning's taught. But Peter Piper beats them all to naught. A hymn. I'm not too young for God to see. He knows my name and nature, too. And all day long he looks at me, 
and sees my actions through and through. He listens to the words I say, and knows the thoughts I have within. And whether I'm at work or play, he's sure to see me if I sin. Oh, how could children tell a lie, or cheat in play, or steal, or fight, if they remembered God was by, and had them always in his sight? If some good minister is near, it makes us careful what we do, and how much more ought we to fear the Lord who sees us through and through. Then, when I want to do amiss, however pleasant it may be, I'll always try to think of this. I'm not too young for God to see. End of Peter Piper's Practical Principles of Plain and Perfect Pronunciation Read by Dennis Sayers for LibriVox, Modesto, California